Good afternoon. It is, I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm Stacey McIntyre. I'm the CEO of Couplet Care. Couplet refers to the mom infant couplet on a postnatal unit um, in the hospital. So that's what we're here to talk about today. So the history is that um, babies used to be delivered and taken to the nursery. So many of you are quite familiar with the picture on the left and those infant bassinets that are throughout the world. Those were designed specifically for nurses to take care of infants while they're standing up. So they were um, easy to access at a higher level. Unfortunately, what is now happening is that these old bassinets, which is old style equipment, is being used in the innovative rooming in standard that is a global standard. So rooming in refers to the mom and the infant in the room together. This is really an important innovation because there are long-term health benefits for both the infant and the mom when they're in the room together from the first moments after birth. The American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends two years of breastfeeding that starts in the first few minutes and days of um, an infant's life and the relationship and bond between the infant and the mom. So, um, and, and breastfeeding has many, many uh, positive implications. Um, but what's happening is the moms cannot reach these uh, infants in these old bassinets. And it creates a lot of challenges. It creates um, the risk of the mom tearing stitches if she's had a C-section. It creates the risk of the mom dropping the infant. Uh, the, the rates of infant drops, according to the American Academy of Peds, has increased to approximately 1,600 infant drops in U.S. hospitals alone every year. I think that's severely underreported. Um, uh, there are a number of new moms um, I have spoken with who did drop their infant and did not report it. And then the other risk is suffocation. So if it's too hard to put the infant back in the bassinet, then the mom might fall asleep, especially post-C-section and especially um, if on pain meds. There's a, a case right now in Adventist Medical Center for about $8.6 million of uh, liability due to this very thing happening. The nurse handed the infant to the mom for breastfeeding. The mom fell asleep, the nurse didn't come back for over an hour, and the infant suffocated. And that's one example of many, many, many. So what we did is we created the couplet care bassinet. Dr. Kristen Tully is an infant um, maternal safety expert out of UNC. This is a University of North Carolina spin out. And through her observational research, she realized that the old style bassinets and even some of the newer bassinets that are still on the old platform are really inappropriate for rooming in. And so she spends her life thinking about maternal infant safety. And um, so she created the couplet care bassinet where 510k exempt class two device. So our regulatory pathway has very few risks. Uh, we do have a U.S. patent which was issued about a year ago, and um, six international patents pending with an ex exclusive license from UNC. We conducted a usability pilot study with our SBIR Phase One NIH grant, and we conducted that at UNC. Um, we had great results. So one of those results is that the mom calls to the nurse reduced by 73%. The infant time out of the room reduced by 60%. Both of those are relevant because both of those are is nursing time for non-medical reasons. And so in today's uh, critical nursing shortage, especially, um, you know, thank you, Kate, for your insights about that across the world and in Africa, the U.S. is... Um, critically short on nurses, especially on uh, postnatal units. And so um, any time that's spent working below the level of the license is um, time and cost lost and creates burnout. So we did a bit of a, um, a financial model on this. And so for a 20-bed unit, 
if you translate that time into cost savings, it's about a quarter million dollars a year in nurse savings. And that's just on those two findings alone. That doesn't take into consideration the risk to the hospital. If there's an infant drop, certainly if there's a suffocation, if there is an infant drop that gets reported, it can result in a delay in discharge for the mom-infant couplet that backs up the admission pipeline. There's more nurse time, doc time, testing, a transfer potentially to the NICU, and it's uh, very complicated. So we took a look at our global market. And our global addressable market, our TAM is about $1.4 billion. These are the countries in which we have PCT patents pending. Of course, we have our patent in the United States. And um, we um, are conceptualizing China and Brazil. We know there are a lot more babies born there than are represented here. These are really the tier one hospitals. And um, uh, certainly we can expand beyond these countries um, as well. So uh, we've been working on this for a while. We have our fourth generation prototype that is set to be delivered within the next two weeks. And, um, and those will go to three to five high profile hospitals for testing. Uh, we're really excited about that. And um, we have a number of hospitals who have been champing at the bit to have our bassinet in their hospital. I was contacted after the Triangle Venture pitch day last week by one in Wilmington, Novant, saying that they really need our bassinet uh, for infants who are born with disabilities and who are born with addiction um, and substance uh, detox because they need to be held and the mom can't safely hold an infant in the hospital. So our bassinet allows for the mom to rest her hand on the infant and they can both sleep comfortably. So our third finding in our usability pilot was in fact that the infant wakes the mom far less frequently with the couplet care bassinet. And it's very easy for the mom to return the infant to the bassinet and there's no need to hold an infant while sleeping. Um, we have relationships with Baby Friendly USA, Carolina Global Breastfeeding Institute. There are hundreds of hospitals associated with both of these organizations. We meet the standards for the Joint Commission, Global Breastfeeding, Baby Friendly USA. And there is a Joint Commission requirement that hospitals do upgrade their bassinets, especially if there's wood on them and depending on how old they are because of infection control issues. So those bassinets have to turn over anyway. Let's have that happen with a bassinet that's safe and can be accessible. Our bassinet is the only bassinet out there uh, that is 100% accessible by the mom and doesn't require a second person. That's very meaningful because not all uh, new parents have a partner. Not all new partners can actually be in the room. And we want to save nurses from running up and down the hall simply to hand the baby to the mom and put the baby back. There is a joint commission standard that nurses must round on a new couplet every hour just to see if the mom is sleepy and put the infant back in the bassinet. And so our commercialization pathway looks like this. We're um, placing our fourth generation prototype that's already been through design for manufacturing and has a locked in design into three to five hospitals in December. And then um, we will be off to the races for our beta and pre-production prototype, which uh, will we'll target building 300 bassinets for distribution in those hospitals who have partnered with us. Um, and so at that point, we'll have a decision to make. Do we, at that point, want to continue manufacturing, distributing? Do we want to do a national scale launch, a sub-license, or an acquisition? And this is a little bit uh, of a different view of our timeline. Right now, we're raising three and a half to, uh, two and a half to three million dollars in our Series A raise, and that will take us through, in fact, the next prototype the finalization of all of our testing that is necessary, and then our 300 prototype uh, production units that will be distributed. This is our board, Dr. Kristen Tully is on the left. Uh, Don, uh, Don Holsworth and Jan Davis are both serial entrepreneurs with vast um, histories in uh, the healthcare and uh, marketing field. Uh, Kevin Schimmel-Finnick, 
is uh, quite familiar with medical device commercialization, and uh, Marshall Kerensky is a partner with Loud Capital. They were our lead investor in our convertible note, but he's also an orthopedic surgeon. We have a, a vast array of uh, engineers who are working with us pictured below. They were all part of the Transenterics team here in the North Carolina Triangle and um, quite adept at uh, commercialization of medical devices. So we're asking $3 million in our Series A. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, that will complete our prototype development for our pre-production prototype, the final testing, and then to build the first 300 and distribute uh, those bassinets. And so our bassinet will be de-risked, we will um, have all the documentation uh, that will be required by the FDA, although we do not need FDA approval because we are a class two um, 510k exempt device. We have previously raised uh, 750 in a convertible note and 515 in grants. So I will stop there and um, answer any questions. Thank you so much.